Barry Curry apologises after Christian Chaplin told to remove Cross. The charity Marie Curry has apologised unreservedly to a Christian Chaplin after he was told he would face consequences and would need retraining. Stinks of Chinese Communist Republic of China or whatever they want to call it if he did not remove a half inch badge pin with a cross on it from his jumper. Well actually it probably it's more likely stinks. Well actually it stinks of the UK doesn't it? Uh, we've seen recently over the past couple of years how people have been told to button it, silence, keep quiet, you're not allowed to wear this, you're not allowed to do that, you're not allowed to do that, they'll just keep trying it on. Anyway, 73 year old Derek Timms was told by a, Meth a Methodist minister of all people, a minister at the charity Solihull branch, that he must not wear the cross as it might offend and create barriers with patience. This is a Christian Methodist minister who should know better. He's obviously, well, he doesn't know the scriptures, does he? And I shall read for you now. 1 Corinthians. And I shall read for you now. 1 Corinthians 1 18. This is Paul the Apostle who wrote down. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Yet do you think the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ is foolishness? Do you? Do you think it's foolishness? We'll read on, we'll come back to that. The controversy began in September shortly after the branch announced that the job titles of members of the chaplaincy would be changed to spiritual advisors. The move signalled a more interfaith approach. So we have here, they want to change what it means to be a, a minister or what it means to be one of those who are Christian ministers within this branch to spiritual advisors. Where we heard that where they got this interfaith thing going on. We can't offend anybody. So it's there, the foundations are being laid ready for this Methodist minister who, who for me is, should he be a minister of the cross of Jesus Christ? We've just read the cross of Jesus Christ is foolishness to those who are being, to those who are perishing. Surely if this was a real Methodist minister, a real follower of Jesus Christ, he would be more than happy to see the cross of Jesus Christ, the symbolic cross of Jesus Christ, being upheld for everybody to see because that's what it is. It is a symbol. I'm going to go on to what it means later on. A new Methodist minister began leading the spiritual advisors and after meeting Mr. Timms told him in an email that he should refrain from wearing a cross. The email said in line with the ethos of hospice and healthcare chaplaincy, no religious symbols should be worn by those engaged in spiritual care. We need to be there for people of all faiths and none. Whilst I recognise you shared a story after about one patient liking the cross you wore, it can create a barrier to others. The idea is that we should appear, appear and neutral and that enables a spiritual encounter that is about what the person we are visiting needs. In response, Mr. Timms asked why the crosses were prohibited as it shows people I am a Christian chaplain. He asked whether the same approach applied to Sikhs with turbans and Muslims wearing a burqa or a prayer dress. He said that my faith helps me to help the patients and staff whether they have faith or not. And after that, I assume that on Tuesday I am wearing my cross. I will be sent home like a naughty little person, naughty little boy. As a compromise, it was suggested that Mr. Timms could wear a cross in his pocket and put it on if he was going into the room of a person of Christian faith. Oh dear me. Dear, dear, dear me. <laughs> dear me. Mr. Timms then searched the Code of Conduct for Healthcare Chaplains and NHS chaplain sees guidelines and he failed to find any relevant reference to either the wearing of crosses or any other religious symbols being prohibited or otherwise after raising this however mr timms was told that this was not about whether he could or could not wear the crosses but the ethos of what it means to be a chaplain or a spiritual care provider changing the definitions of those that are to care for those who need care 
Yes, changing the definitions, and that's what it's all about. At a meeting with the minister, Mr. Timms was told that unless he took his cross off, he could not work at Marie Curie as a chaplain. He then handed in his identification badge and left the premises. Well done standing up for the cross of Jesus Christ. At a meeting with the minister, Mr. Timms was told that unless he took his cross off, he could not work at Marie Curie as a chaplain. He then handed in his identification badge and left the premises. Supported by the Christian League Centre, Mr. Timms then wrote to the Methodist minister saying, I have had a crisis of conscience and since I received this request, I would know that I have worn the pin for 11 years on a daily basis as a chaplain before joining Marie Curie Solihull. I have worn it for five years while working for Marie Curie. I have serious and cogent reasons for wearing it and consider it a manifestation of my faith and a devotion to God. The cross I wear around my neck is highly, highly meaningful to me as it represents physical devotion to both my late wife and to God who brought us together and blessed our marriage. I have searched on the Marie Curie Solihull website policy documents, the NHS website, nowhere can I find where there is a written policy which prohibits the wearing of crosses in my specific situation or why it is prohibited. Mr. Sims' letter was then escalated to the Marie Curie Regional Head Office, who this month wrote in response, I can confirm that currently we have neither an organisation or uniform policy that will support our recent request to remove your car offs while supporting patients and families in the hospice. I apologise unreservedly for the distress that we have caused. What would be the next step, my folks? He says, this is a politician's answer. Okay, Mr. Tim's letter was then escalated to the regional office, who this month wrote in response, I can confirm that currently we have neither an organisational or uniform policy that would support our recent request to remove your cross while supporting patients and families in the hospice. Currently, folks, if they've changed, if they've changed what those who are to minister to people are called, to spiritual advisors, then that's the thin edge of the wedge. And this is what happens. Responding to the apology, Mr. Timms, who supported vulnerable patients and families throughout the pandemic at Marie Curie, said, I was shocked and hurt by how I was treated. There was and is no need to suppress the symbol of the cross. And in so doing, send a message that the Christian faith needs to be neutralized and removed entirely from a chaplaincy frontline service. You can't neutralize the Christian faith. You can't neutralize Jesus Christ and his work. I'll tell you why, because he created all things. And he said his word would reach out to the ends of the world. And this is what we're seeing 2000 years ago. His word is true. The cross of Jesus Christ is the means by which God reconciled the world to himself. The means by which he took upon himself the sins and the punishment of his people by becoming a man in Jesus Christ and walking this earth. Jesus Christ, God incarnate, God taking on human flesh. Walk this earth, showing who he is, who he was demonstrating by his works and his signs and his miracles and then he was placed on a he was arrested placed on a piece of wood crucified dead declared dead taken down placed in a tomb and as he said destroy this body and in three days i will raise it again destroy this temple he said and i will raise it in three days the temple of Solomon was his body and three days later <coughs> disciples went to the tomb they discovered the tomb was empty and then Jesus Christ appeared to them over 40 days and so on demonstrating that he'd rose from the dead they saw him die on a piece of wood the first fruits of the dead and that cross that he was placed on is the symbol of what happened and God's reconciling man back into the relationship with God that fell apart where the curse was placed on humanity in the whole of creation 4,000 year, years earlier in the Garden of Eden from Adam and Eve's sin. And this was reconciling 4,000 years later after Adam and Eve's sin, his sheep back to God to have a relationship as it's supposed to originally be. And Jesus Christ is gonna come back not to deal with sin for his people, but 
for those who are eagerly waiting for him. So, interfaith, the ideology is becoming so firmly embedded throughout the Christian faith that it is essentially cancelling itself. When I became a Christian, I wanted to show people the faith that totally changed my life. I vowed that I would stand up for Jesus and wear a cross to show people the faith that I have. I started wearing a cross 14 years ago and I have not stopped since. No one is going to tell me that I can't wear it as it means so much to me. No one has ever been offended until now. The easiest thing to do would have been to say, I'll take it off. But I thought, no, I should be standing up for what I believe in. If I had given in, I believe I would have been saying that I am embarrassed to be a Christian. That's right. Jesus Christ says, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. From experience, by my, my, my wearing my cross, patience, trust me. They might not have my faith or belief, but they trust me. I always meet people where they are, whether they are a Muslim or atheist, and it all would be a privilege for me to support people at the toughest moments in their lives. I welcome and appreciate the apology from Mary Curry, but believe my work as a chaplain now lies elsewhere. In a statement to Premier and Mary Curry spokesperson said, Charity does not have and never has had a policy that prohibits the wearing of religious symbols. Furthermore, we unambiguously support the right for staff and volunteers to do so. We have issued an apology on this. We are clear that the charity is inclusive of everyone and values each individual's contribution. We want every part of the Marie Curry to be a place where everyone feels accepted. And this includes protecting people's right to wear a religious symbol. So we'll just read through a few scriptures concerning the cross. We've already gone through one in 1 Corinthians 1. 18 and we read in galatians 6 14 but may it never be that i would boast except in the cross of our lord jesus christ through which the world has been crucified to me and i to the world matthew 16 24 then jesus said to his disciples if anyone wishes to come after me he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me philippians 2 8 we read for many walk of whom i have often told you and now tell you even weeping that there are enemies of the cross of jesus christ and in 1 peter 2 24 we read and he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die in sin or die to sin and live to righteousness for by his wounds you were healed clearly clearly the symbol of the cross is that it's a symbol of jesus christ and his death it's a symbol pointing to the piece of wood that jesus christ was was placed upon and the reason he was placed on that piece of wood he was the perfect sacrifice this cross is a symbol jesus christ is not on it it's an empty cross because Jesus Christ is no longer on the cross. He conquered sin and death. He was taken off the cross and rose from the dead. So if you've got a cross with Jesus Christ on it, he's not on there anymore, okay? He is not on that cross anymore. This is the symbol, it's an empty cross, a cross for which Jesus Christ was slaughtered on, was murdered on, and was placed on, and but taken off from and placed in a tomb. And so, Jesus Christ's death is for a propitiation for his people. His people no longer now have God's wrath remaining upon them because the wrath of God was placed on Jesus Christ on that piece of wood 2,000 years ago. There was an old sacrificial system where the animals were sacrificed, but the, bull, the blood of bulls and goats cannot do away with sin it, it, it cannot appease sin but it was pointing towards the work of jesus christ on that piece of wood he was the perfect sacrifice 
he fulfilled the law because he's perfect. We can't, we, we've got no chance of fulfilling the law because we are dead in our sins and our trespasses. Just as Jesus Christ was placed on that piece of wood for the sins of his people, and it's a pointer towards Jesus Christ was placed on that piece of wood for his sheep. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But believing in Jesus Christ doesn't just mean believing in him. The demons believe in God. So what? But they should have. You believe in God, it's not good enough. You need to believe into, believe into his works, become a new creation in Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Saviour. 180 degree turnaround. It's not by your works, it's his works on that cross, on that piece of wood 2,000 years ago, by which God gets us right with him. We don't get ourselves right with God. That's an impossibility. God has called us. God calls, if you're hearing the word of God today, if you're hearing the words of Jesus Christ today, repent and believe. Repent and believe into. Repent and believe into Jesus Christ. Amen.